In today's video we have a Soundstorm Laboratories or SSLDD988ACP. I guess we are about to get stormed in here. But hey, this is a low-cost Apple CarPlay and Android Auto digital receiver. And this is a double DIN unit and has no physical buttons. Everything is touch screen or touch button. Now let's uh, dig in the box and we find this uh, nicely labeled uh, wire harness along with a microphone that has a uh, adhesive for the windshield mount, brackets and screws and of course a little frame ring to achieve a flush install. It features a 6.75 inch capacitive touchscreen with a non-HD resolution. Now it's time for the famous boot time test. Sorry, but I had to fast forward. I feel like it took forever. So 14 seconds, um, kind of long, but uh, let's see. This is the main screen that we get here. Nice and well proportioned, so you don't miss any selection. And we are booting straight to the CarPlay. Just want to quickly mention that you need a wired connection in order to use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Let's do a quick screen responsiveness, and it doesn't feel super bad to be honest. I will give it a 7 out of 10, but let's do more scrolling and see how snappy and responsive it is. And I pulled up Safari here and scrolling on this website, it doesn't feel too bad, it's manageable, you can uh, do whatever you have to do, it doesn't really lag behind and it's fine, I would, I would uh, stay with 7 out of 10 for now. By the way, you're probably wondering how I got so many apps on uh, Apple CarPlay, well I made a video about it, uh, I will put a link in the descriptions and... Uh, you can uh, watch it from there. Now while you are using CarPlay, if you press the microphone button, it's gonna bring up Siri or if you are using Android Auto, it's gonna bring the Google Assistant. Also if you hold the home button, it's gonna put it in a kind of screensaver mode and if you tap it, will turn the screen off. Tap it back again and it comes back on and there you are. You can uh, switch easily between those screens. Moving on on the built-in uh, apps, this is the tuner or radio screen. It has a nice and simple uh, interface, very pleasant, so I really like it the way they uh, designed this. You can also switch between FN and AM and uh, you have a bunch of settings here for the radio. Basic settings, nothing uh, fancy there. So we're moving on to the Bluetooth. Uh, you can use this feature as well if you don't want to use any wired connection for the upper CarPlay or Android Auto. And also this is the equalizer, you have a shortcut right there on the main screen. Let's do a quick walkthrough of the receiver's settings and we are on general tab. Here we have basic options but one feature that I want to point out is power off delay. Now depending on the vehicle, some will turn off the receivers while cranking up but setting a delay will fix that issue, that's why power off delay is for. Switching to the audio section, here we have simple and basic settings that we can use and for the subwoofer we got three options to turn it on and off, also we got four fragrances for the subwoofer filter and 14 subwoofer levels, that is pretty cool. Now there is this interesting thing called loudness, this is basically a sound effect that will boost the low and high frequencies. Then you have internal amp, well this is an option to turn off the amplifier that is built in the receiver, so if you are using an external amplifier it is a good idea to turn it off, that way you don't get any other uh, unwanted noises. This is the 10 band equalizer that this unit has and also has a bunch of uh, presets and also a preset, I am not sure why it is not working very well could be because of the screen not so responsive of I don't know but whatever scrolling down to the volume we see here a default volume which will uh, let you adjust the system wide uh, sound levels source level will let you adjust the sound for each individual uh, sound source that you have 
Switching to the display tab, we have illumination control that will uh, dim your uh, display brightness when uh, the headlights are on. And there is a gamma day and night adjustment for the display. You can play with those to get the best image quality or uh, colors. Now, uh, the dimmer, even at the lowest setting, uh, I find it too bright uh, at night driving on a very dark road. That can be bothersome for some people and it's good to know. In the UI section, we got the wallpapers with three selection of wallpapers. I don't think there is uh, any way you can add your own. But if you find a way to add your own wallpaper, just let me know in the comments. Now what's cool is that uh, it supports front and rear camera and those can be turned off and on, it depends on the preference and the installation and also it comes with this parking guideline adjustment so you can adjust it according to your uh, camera angle. Now you may wondering what rear view delay does, well it will prevent the backup camera to be triggered when you quickly shift from parking to drive. This is a cool small detail that gives a smooth experience to the user. So overall it's a cool and simple receiver with not too many features but this is what you get for the price. I wish it had the ability to change the colors of the buttons and a lower dimmer setting for the night driving. This is it for this video, I hope you enjoyed, if you like this kind of stuff, uh, subscribe for more similar content and click like for this video. I will see you next time.